Before we explain decentralized exchanges, you first need to understand how centralized exchanges work. So, here is a very quick recap. Centralized exchanges use a mechanism called the order book mechanism. So, what happens is that when you want to buy Bitcoin, for example, you make an order and state how much you want to buy and the maximum price you are willing to pay. And on the other hand, sellers make orders stating how much they want to sell and the minimum price they are willing to accept. The list of all these buying and selling orders is called the order book and a trade is completed when an order from a buyer is matched with an order from a seller. So, what if there is no order from a seller matching your order price? Well, you can wait or accept an order from a seller for a higher price. So, that is basically how centralized exchanges work. A decentralized exchange on the other hand is kinda like a robot. This robot has piles of many tokens stored and always willing to buy from you the tokens you have or sell to you any tokens you want, without you having to wait for somebody to accept your order. So you may be wondering, how does this robot determine the prices? Well, it uses math to calculate prices according to the supply it has from each token. The less it has from a specific token, the higher its price will be. If you are confused, don't worry, we will explain how all of this happens in details in this video. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, you will know what is a decentralized exchange and how it actually works, then we will talk about some advantages that decentralized exchanges have over centralized exchanges, and finally, some disadvantages of decentralized exchanges. So, let's get started. So, what is a decentralized exchange? Simply, a decentralized exchange or a DEX is a marketplace or a platform that allows people to trade tokens directly between each other with no intermediary. For example, you can use a decentralized exchange like Uniswap to trade your MANA tokens for some LINK tokens. This decentralized exchange is not owned by any central authority, that is why it is called decentralized. It is just code running on a blockchain and executing trades automatically between people. We will get to how a DEX actually works in a minute, but a very important point here you need to understand is that you can't buy crypto with fiat currencies like the dollar from a decentralized exchange. You can do that on a centralized exchange like Coinbase or Binance, but to use a decentralized exchange, you need to already have crypto, and on the decentralized exchange, you can swap the tokens you already have for any other tokens on the same blockchain. So, what does that mean? You may know that the Ethereum blockchain has many tokens running on top of it, other than Ethereum, like Tether, DAI, USDC, Shiba Inu, and Chainlink. Similar to this Ethereum blockchain, we have other blockchains like the Binance Smart Chain, which also has tokens running on it, like BNB, Tether, USDC, and the Binance USD. So, when you use a decentralized exchange, you can swap your Chainlink on the Ethereum blockchain with Tether, for example, also on the Ethereum blockchain, or you can swap your Binance USD for Tether or for any other token on the Binance Smart Chain. But if you want to swap your tokens on the Ethereum blockchain for tokens on the Binance Smart Chain, then this is known as a cross-chain swap, and to do it, you need to use something called a blockchain bridge. You can watch our video about bridges if you want to know more about this type of swaps and how they work. But now let's get to how these decentralized exchanges actually work. So, like how we explained at the beginning, you can think of a decentralized exchange as a robot that has piles of tokens stored in pools. These pools filled with tokens are called liquidity pools. Each liquidity pool stores two tokens. For example, a liquidity pool may contain Ethereum and LINK tokens. Another pool may contain Tether and DAI tokens. Any decentralized exchange has many of these liquidity pools. When you, for example, use a DEX to swap your LINK tokens for DAI tokens, the decentralized exchange will use the LINK DAI pool and automatically take your LINK tokens and deposit them into the pool, and then give you DAI tokens from the same pool. You may be wondering, from where do all these tokens come? Well, these tokens come from investors who want to earn some interest on their tokens. These investors are called liquidity providers. When you do a swap on any decentralized exchange, you pay a small fee, this fee goes to these liquidity providers to reward them for depositing their tokens into the liquidity pools. So, now, the important question here is how does the decentralized exchange determine the prices of tokens? Remember when we said that the robot determines the prices 
using a mathematical formula? Most decentralized exchanges use the constant product mathematical formula. We won't get deep into the math here as we have explained how the prices are calculated in details in our liquidity pools video. But basically, what happens is that the pool will raise the price of a token as its supply decreases and will lower the price as the supply increases. For example, if a pool has $1 million in Ethereum and $1 million in Tether, and then a trader comes in and swaps $50,000 worth of Tether for Ethereum, then the supply of Ethereum in the pool will decrease, so the pool will raise the price of Ethereum. This is done to never run out of tokens, as more people buy Ethereum, its price will increase even more. An important point to know here is that these pools do not automatically update the prices of tokens to be similar to market prices. So, there may be a difference between the pool price and the real market price. So, you may be wondering, how does this pool price get adjusted to the real market price? Well, that is where arbitrage traders come in. Arbitrage traders are traders who make profits from the difference between a pool's price and the market price. So for example, if the price of Ethereum in a mispriced pool is 2,000 Tether, and the market price of Ethereum is 2,100 Tether, then an arbitrage trader will buy Ethereum for 2,000 Tether from the mispriced pool, and then sell this Ethereum for 2,100 Tether, making an easy profit of 100 Tether tokens. As more and more arbitrage traders do this, the supply of Ethereum will gradually decrease in the mispriced pool, so the pool will gradually increase the price of Ethereum until it reaches the correct market price. That is where no more profits can be made by the arbitrage traders. So, to sum this part up, any decrease or increase in the market price of any token will not directly affect the pool price. The price will only be adjusted by arbitrage traders. Anytime the pool price is different from the market price, the arbitrage traders will make profits and readjust it back in seconds. So, the prices of most tokens on any decentralized exchange will be the same as the market price most of the time. This method of using liquidity pools and mathematical formulas to adjust prices is known as Automated Market Maker, or AMN for short. And it is used by most decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, SushiSwap, PancakeSwap, Curve, and Balancer, although there may be some differences. For example, Curve is a DEX focused on trading stablecoins and it can have three tokens in the same pool. Balancer uses a different mathematical formula than Uniswap, and it can have up to 8 or sometimes 16 tokens in one pool. Uniswap is the most popular DEX until now, it has two tokens per pool like how we explained, and uses the constant product math formula which we explained in our liquidity pools video. SushiSwap and PancakeSwap are very similar to Uniswap, but they support many other blockchains and they also use the same formula as Uniswap. Now let's get to the advantages of using a decentralized exchange compared to centralized exchanges. First of all, a decentralized exchange is not owned by any company, it is just code running and executing trades automatically, so you don't need to trust any company with your money like how you need to do with centralized exchanges. A second advantage of using DEXs is that you can stay anonymous. You don't need to submit any documents to use a decentralized exchange. But on most centralized exchanges, you need to submit KYC or know your customer documents. So, you will be asked to submit a scan of your ID, social security number, full name, phone number, and sometimes take selfies with your phone. You don't need any of that to use a DEX, and you can stay totally anonymous. Finally, while using a DEX to swap your tokens, you stay in control of your tokens at all times, meaning that the DEX doesn't store your tokens at all. You get the tokens you want in your wallet immediately, unlike buying a token on a centralized exchange where they store the tokens for you. And you have to trust that they will send them to you when you withdraw them. So these are the main advantages of using a DEX to trade your tokens. Now let's get to the disadvantages or limitations. So the code that runs a decentralized exchange is known as a smart contract and like any other code, it can have bugs and vulnerabilities. Hackers sometimes use these vulnerabilities to steal the tokens stored in liquidity pools this can mainly impact liquidity providers, not the normal traders. Another thing we should mention here is that decentralized exchanges are not that easy to use, especially for beginners. The interfaces can sometimes be intimidating and most of the time, the exchange doesn't offer easy-to-follow tutorials for beginners, there is also no one you can talk to when something wrong happens or when you need support with anything you want to do. Another disadvantage of using DEXs is that sometimes you need to pay very high gas fees to swap your tokens, Sometimes, you need to pay $100 to swap $20 worth of tokens. 
so you may need to make your transactions at times where the gas fees are low. Finally, we have the prices volatility and slippage. So when you are trying to get a new token with low liquidity, meaning that the pool doesn't have a lot of this token, you may find the price of the token extremely volatile and you may get less tokens than what you were expecting. This is known as slippage. And it happens when the price of the token changes during the time your transaction takes to get confirmed on the blockchain. This mainly affects small liquidity pools and to avoid it, you sometimes need to pay a higher gas fee to get your transaction confirmed faster on the blockchain. This concept of slippage may take an entire video to explain, but this was the general idea. At the end of this video, we really hope you learned what you need to know about decentralized exchanges and how they work. And if you liked our video, hit the like button. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos. Thanks for watching.